thought he was notified for this meeting today. I, I just assumed that he was. And he I announced was. it on the floor of the Senate. Was he? Was he, he wasn't in the Senate this morning, was he? Oh, okay. Okay. I, didn't, I, I just thought he was on mute or something. Um, okay. Would you, uh, uh, Diane, would you like to run through it? Or how do you want to, how do you want to handle Who wants to handle this? How, how do you want to do it? Senator, that's entirely up to you. Well, we no, you, you give us, uh, what, why don't we take up your, your proposals one at a time there and uh, see what we can't do. Well, thank you, Senator. And well, we if we kick off. I don't know if we want to state that we are now live on yeah. on. Uh, we're now live, and you are welcome to the House and Senate Transportation Committee's uh, Committee of Conference. Yeah. It is Friday, uh, May fourteenth. Uh, we are starting just a little bit after one thirty. It's our first meeting, and we we have a variety of points that that the Senate and the House, given the timing of when we have the bill. Um, have opportunities to hear maybe something different and, and things are not always in the same way. So we're, we're here to talk about where, where, where we uh, agree, where we, where we have questions, and maybe where we have some tougher, more um, difficult conversations to have around positions that are there. Madam so Chair, I see uh, Anthea is with us. Uh, so she's terrific. Yeah. Do you want her to take us through it or how do you, how do you want to handle um, you? For time constraints, I'm thinking it's 1.30. Yeah. You know, um, I think if we want her to run through it, she she does have the capacity to do it quickly. I don't think- she, the, She's very good. <laughs> <laughs> very lucky to have her. <laughs> and, you know, and we can we can stop then, sir, if it's sure. okay for you. Where, where we've no, noted is where we have questions. Right. We're hoping yep. to get clarity from your sure. committee. And then we have where we have maybe stronger, stronger desires around. And then when we have like other other issues. So if you don't mind, we'll we'll stop. And uh, my house members on this committee, please uh, stop to and to ask questions along the way. I yeah. will try to do my best to represent those questions. But if people have more sure. to say. Okay. Great. So, yes, Anthea, um, please. OK, so uh, for the record, Anthea Dexter Cooper from the Office of Legislative Counsel. And I think if the um, conference committee would like, um, I can go through the side by side and then you can pause or tell me to pause if there's more that you want to discuss. That would be fine with us. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put that up on the screen. And this is posted on um, Senate Transportation's page for today. So thank you, Lori or Julie, whoever did that, um, along as with this is uh, one of the documents that I emailed out yesterday. So and if, we, um, yeah, if, we, if we get to a we agree we'll just resolve it right now and just move on. Is that all right, uh, Senator Chittenden, or? Okay, thank you, all right. Okay, so section one, I think is probably gonna need to be like the last one that you close out, just since that's the one that adopts the whole book and, and makes everything the T-bill. Okay. Um, but I will note that the differences here between the House version and the Senate version, and these are highlighted in yellow in that middle column, have to do with some of the definitions. So. The Senate version includes a definition for electric bicycle. That's the first portion of the definition of electric bicycle from S66, which has been sent to the governor. Um, and then the Senate version did not keep the House's definition for multi-unit dwelling, but instead in section 22, there's a definition for multi-unit affordable housing and multi-unit dwelling owned by a nonprofit. So I think probably once you sort out section 22, and um, figure out what you wanna do about the electric bicycle piece in sections 20 and 21, where I think there is a lot of agreement between the two uh, sides, you can close out section one along with all of the money stuff. So I think this is probably just to put a pin in it and come back to it, but the only differences between the two bodies are with respect to those definitions. Okay. Um, so section two um, in the house's version, this was the language that was going to require the maintenance for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail be included in the transportation program. Um, and the Senate version deleted this section in its entirety. So I don't know if uh, Representative Lamp, for that's something you want me to pause on. Well, I, I think we can pause on it because it's still, it was totally deleted. And um, the, the House position was, is that we, we had heard, you know, that, you know, within the report that came out just before January, that this expense is coming. And it wasn't, 
it it was listed in there and I realized that they do a really good job about making sure that they 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 don't undervalue it but at $350,000 a year to run this maintenance we want it to make sure that AOT was prepared and that we know it's coming and that that they actually include it in their budget in the future so yeah. that was the reason that 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 is in there is we want to make sure that there's no questioning or no surprise that this is coming everybody has gotten the report we we've got a potential quote of that the other thing is that this is oh my god it's going to be the best jewel one not the best a big jewel for our state sir and um we want to make sure that we've we've got a well planned out plan on taking care of it and that in the past here it's we've had great work with uh, volunteer groups but as we move forward to 93 miles <laughs> culverts and things, it's, it's going to need um, significant state investment, both uh, financially and with a commitment to, to, uh, to its tra that trail. 93 miles is a, a long trail to keep up. So um, we'd really, really like to see in some fashion or that, that that version of it being put in the bill to say, we need to prepare for this. We, we realize it's a little, um, it's, it's expense down the road and we don't know the number. We did not include the number. So we would love it if you would consider that, sir, of putting that back in. Michelle, you're with us today, right? Here I am. Okay, here you are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment in this section uh, at this time? Um, no, we're fine with the language in terms of the fact that we are planning for this anyways and um, we will be undertaking a, um, a study, this a management planning process this um, over the course of the next nine to 12 months that will um, include public engagement and engagement with the stakeholders such as VAST and the municipalities and regional planning commissions um, to come up with a framework for um, the, the final management plan and responsibilities and um, so <clears throat> forests and parks will also be a part of that. So um, the language as, um, as put in by the house uh, works for us. Um, if, if it's something that uh, the committee is agreeable to. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator uh, Chittenden, what do you think? We, should we go through the whole thing and then uh, and, and get some input from Senator Perchlick or should we close out something if you think it's right. It's kind of awkward right now, to be honest with you. I'm very new to this. I, I, I could go in any direction you want. I can also reflect on things I recall being raised in this discussion, if that's useful or is that something we do? Yeah, pro probably we'll, uh, we'll just buzz through everything and uh, then we'll have uh, Senator Perchlick. I, I, I apologize. I thought it was a done deal, but uh, at least we'll go. So let's go through everything and then we'll uh, uh, he'll have his uh, input into it. Thank you. I appreciate I, that. I, I agree, sir. We'll probably okay. have a lot more areas where both sure. we and there'll be more discussion. Yeah. Let's, so thank let's you. go through yeah. that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item. Okay. I'll put the share screen back up. Okay. Uh, the next item you're going to have is the section two summary section that was added by the transportation. This has been included in the last two T-bills. And it's a summary of the transportation investments for fiscal year 2022 that are intended to reduce transportation-related greenhouse gas emissions, reduce fossil fuel use, and save Vermont households money. None of this is changing anything else in the rest of the bill. It simply reflects the bill and the binder. It's a summary section, and it allows for um, people who are reading the bill to know what's the highlights uh, related to these areas from that whole white book. Um, so that's sort of the intent behind its inclusion. If it is something that um, the Committee of Conference wants to keep in, um, then we'll just need to make sure that the numbers in there are updated accordingly based on any of the other changes that are made throughout the, the balance of the bill. Okay. So House found this very interesting that, well, we I'll just be frank. We found it very interesting that you put this very long summary in, but then you take the findings out on the work zone piece. It just, they didn't jive. <laughs> but um, so tell us why the summary. It's, uh, I gotta tell you, we didn't take testimony on every one of those 
notes to make sure that they were accurate. I'm, I'm going to rely on both. Well, Senator Birchick was uh, involved in most of these environmental uh, sections, so we probably ought to move wait on. for him. Yeah, but wait for him. Yes, it's 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 not an inaccurate, very nice, but just kind of a little bit baffling between those two things. One came in and one came out. And uh, anyone, anyone uh, or Michelle, anybody that had any input, go right ahead. Uh, go ahead and do it now. But uh, like I said, we uh, most a lot of this, the environmental issues were assigned to uh, Senator Perchlick. So, I don't know, comments. Okay, let's no move. comment. Thank, Thank you. you. So, where are we? Okay, so your next section is going to be. I have to scroll a bit. Uh, section two is quite long. Your next section is gonna be section three in the Senate version. This is pretty consistent across what the House had and what the Senate had. This is where you're swapping out the um, approximately 50 million additional uh, federal highway money that came in at the end of 2020 um, to free up some transportation fund dollars through the maintenance budget that can be used for um, some of the initiatives that the House and Senate have um, decided to add to the transportation program. The difference is in the total amount, which is increased by 150,000 in the Senate's version. And that's to reflect the additional 150,000 that's going to mileage smart from the transportation fund, not um, the ARPA piece. And then also the 400,000 for moving the New Haven train depot. So I think this is a section you cannot close out until you figure out what the total dollar amount is for what you need in additional transportation fund dollars and what needs to be swapped through the maintenance budget. The thing to just remember through all of this is neither the House nor the Senate is proposing a decrease in the maintenance budget. It's level funded and you know, based on what the agency requested in both iterations, the difference in that $550,000 amount comes from those additional increases, the 150,000 for mileage smart and the 400,000 for the New Haven uh, train depot relocation possible grant. Do you have any questions about the train depot? Oh, I'm sure we, we'll we get to that at the end. I, I agree okay. with, with right. Anthea that those are about it, but I would also just add that we did not just level fund in here, the town highway maintenance. It's up almost uh, almost $10 million from where, from where it had been in the past. So not only do we retain that very nice increase in the, in the maintenance, we didn't uh, decrease it from that 103 million that was there. So um, they're, they're in very good shape. So All right. Regardless of what we do, and there's still a good amount of money left over for mm. 23 in there as well. Okay. 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 So your next section is section four. This was added by the Senate at the request of the Agency of Transportation. All it is doing is moving the Bridge 61 in Springfield, Vermont project from the program development program to the town highway bridges program. It's not changing the authorization. It's not changing the total amount in transportation fund dollars. It's simply moving a project from one portion of the transportation program to another. Any so, questions, Madam Chair? So I don't have any questions um, on that. I think we heard about it. We saw, we were gonna see where the, you know, that money gets traded off in the, uh, the the programming. This would be an area where I don't think we had any, I'm looking to my team, that we had any um, issues with. And that could be one of our very first check marks of, okay. Okay, <laughs> let's check that out and get rid of that one anyway. Okay. All right. Oops, that's the house phone, I apologize. Oh, I thought we had a little like, background. Doesn't it sound like an ice cream truck? Every time yeah. I hear that, I think I'm going to go outside and get an ice cream cone or something. <laughs> That's my house phone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Adia. Okay, so your next three sections, I'm not sure how much you can do with these, given the fact that this is ARPA money that's being used um, in, the, this was, um, the transportation program needs to reflect what's appropriated in the big bill, and since the Big bill as it came out of the Senate was using $24.5 million in ARPA money for the DMV IT project, and then $3.5 million for two different uh, stormwater um, projects. One was an increase to an existing project, and one was adding a project and, and authorizing and appropriating $3 million. So these sections 4A, 4B, and 4C are things that definitely need to be linked to whatever's happening in the big bill. 
I don't know if this is something that um, you as a conference committee want to talk about now. I don't know if Chris has more insight as to what's happening um, in the um, conference committee for the big bill um, with your um, colleagues on the appropriations committees. But these three sections were added through the Senate appropriations amendment to make sure that the transportation program properly reflected the money that was being appropriated in their version of the big bill. Okay, we'll we'll wait until we get a full full staff here. Yeah. Yeah, I know that the 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 federal guidelines that came down on Monday, I don't think they're going to impact this, but like you said, I think we we yeah, Jane, on that. Jane has been our expert in this. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I think our team here was perfectly fine depending on where they land with the money with the 4A, 4, 4B. We did have a question around the 4C on the municipal mitigation because we didn't know too much. Ex well, we had an idea we think what it means, but we're not sure. And I don't know if Anthea or Chris could kind of tell us what, um, you know, there's some kicking around. I don't think it's the right term or even Michelle could tell us. Uh, is this about the three acre rule and, and V-transes need to have to comply with? So um, with, with your permission, can we let Michelle maybe? Sure, go right ahead. Okay. So um, Anthea can jump in if I've messed this up, but my understanding is um, th this is not about three acre rule compliance. This has to do with the um, municipal um, general permit for stormwater. I have that mangled a little bit. Um, and also our, um, well, in this case, um, for, for us, the corollary would be our TS4 permit for stormwater management of the state highway system. Um, and Anthea, I don't know if you could uh, clarify anything. I can say that I, um, on 4C, it is an additional $500,000 to that municipal mitigation assistance program. I think the TS4 piece might sort of be related to the three acre um, uh, issue just with um, some language that I've seen in the big bill that's appropriating the $3 million, but I didn't work on any of this language. Um, so I, I really feel a little bit in the dark. I believe it was Senate Natural Resources um, that made this recommendation to Senate Appropriations, and, and they might have um, some more um, information that they can provide on that. Um, so sorry that I'm not more help there. <laughs> All right. Fine. All right. So, I mean, I think these are places where we could probably check those three off and we'll, we'll kind of work to get the more information. Does any of my other team have any input on that? I, I would just, I would just like to know what the code words mean, uh, especially uh, surrounding uh, 4B. Uh, I, 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 okay. Yeah. What, what that, uh, what that means. I'm, I'm fine with the expenditure. I just would like to be able to say to myself, this is what we're paying for. Okay, so I think we can then, four then is the IT project. And I think we agree on that. Okay, and that we just looking for the, what the words are on the code, the code words on 4B and 4C. We're not. Um... Madam Chair. Yes. I was able to find um, further detail in my inbox. <laughs> um, so let me just um, articulate that for you. Um, so the, um, phosphorus control, um, implementation plan for the Lake Champlain Basin, um, includes the need to, um, to develop projects which reduce phosphorus loading from roads, right of way, and facilities. And <clears throat> so the funding in 4B would be to implement projects that arise from that um, from that um, plan in terms of phosphorus reduction. And um, that actually is from our um, general permit for stormwater discharges under um, the TS4 program, which is what is covers roads, et cetera. Um, and then the, um, the, excuse me, I just need to go to this other email, um, to say that, um, let's 
excuse me, the the other the five hundred thousand. Um, oh, here we go. Um, so three million is um, let me just is for the AOT portion of this, and then uh, half a million dollars would go towards the um, municipal stormwater runoff management um, to deal with um, the three acre rule and the full restoration plans and clean water compliance for transportation for the municipality. So that would also go to projects <clears throat> that would be designed to abate phosphorus um, runoff. Representative, that help? Do you have a question? No, that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. what I was hoping for. Thank you. Okay, perfect, and then, thank you. Obviously this is potentially all going to change, but if you're looking for the language from the Senate version of the big bill, that's in uh, section G.700, subsection A, subdivision 1C, and it's the appropriation language is three and a half million to the Agency of Transportation for the implementation of the three acre and flow restoration protection and clean water compliance expenditures for transportation infrastructure and to fund the municipal grants and aid program to address stormwater runoff from municipal folks. Sounds terrific. Means that we're gonna help the towns with the stormwater or are we helping ourselves? Sorry for my, my density. It would be both. Okay, good, good to know. All right, so Representative Shaw, we're, I'm gonna take your lead on this. If you, if you feel satisfied or if you want to wait and percolate around that a little bit before we check this off, but, but whenever you're ready, sir, we can. Uh, I think I'll wait just a little bit okay. on that. So, so Michelle, I think what might be very helpful for, for that, you know, like over the week, um, if, if we could provide that to Representative Shaw, or maybe to the whole committee in the conference committee, that, that information so that we can put that with it. Does that sound fair? Yep, I'll okay. get that out to you via email. Great, great. And then it's in the big bill section G700 something something 1C? A1B. G700, little a, number one, big C. Thank you. Okay. That was the easy stuff. <laughs> We're ready to sign off. <laughs> yeah, about one, we got, we haven't gotten through towards, it's a good thing we only have a little page that we don't have like 5,000 segments to our bill. We can, <laughs> we can, we can really dig into this one. Okay. Okay. So uh, continuing on the next sections that you have, and I say sections because they go together, are the repeal of the US Route 4 permit language. So section five, and this was all added by the, the Senate Transportation Committee, um, is the legislative intent surrounding the timing and what needs to happen or what can happen um, with the program, the project that exists prior to the repeal of the US Route 4 permit. So section five is your legislative intent. And then section six is the actual repeal and where you get your repeal date is in the effective dates section. And this would be effective on January 1 of 2022. So that is when section six would become effective and the US Route 4 permit would be repealed. So no longer needing to get the um, permit as of January 1, 2022. Okay, what would you like to know about this? Well, we know that this is been an ongoing discussion maybe within a few people in the town. And this is, this is an area, uh, Senator and, and committee that we, we, have, um, let's, we have not taken up in the house. We have heard from the town. We have, we have probably about as much passion on this as, any, as anybody else. And I, I'll have, I have to tell you that what, you know, we heard testimony or at least to try to get some some recognition of what this was about. And even in the short time that, that we had between the time that the, the bill had been sent over. And now I have to have to say that the, in the past or even up until today, that there's been this conception that the town has been not in charge or not, not in favor or dislike trucks. Okay, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not a route for causing an inconvenience for, for many. 
maybe true and not true. But I have to tell you, sir, that once we had heard and saw some information from the community around this, that this became not just about trucks on the road, which by the way, you know, a permit for free is, the trucks are coming through now. They go through now all the time. The issue that was clear to us that it was beyond just going through, it's a safety hazard that really behind all of this is a safety hazard that the vast majority of the trucks are not able to configure themselves. It's a road configuration problem that they have to cross into the oncoming lane the vast majority of the time, and that's a big safety issue. That is what needs to get fixed. That is the problem. And that until that problem is corrected, there, there really cannot be any satisfaction you know, for either myself or maybe probably many others around the fact that we're allowing something that's not safe to occur. And the, the answer to that is not easier. It would have been done in the last 10 years. But that goes to the heart of where, where we're looking at this now and, and wanting to make sure that we take into consideration the economic development and the truck traffic and the size differential. And, you know, Vermont's roads, we were based on a trail. It's narrow. They're narrow. And so um, we have a position that this is just a safety issue for the community and, and wanting to get to that core goal of how do we correct that and not really about permits. Um, my Thank question you. would be, this happened many years ago when Senator Rivers was there and it got through, uh, you know, and, and I don't know how it got through, but anyway, it got through. But my question is this, very simply, how do we justify it to the 251 towns in this state of Vermont that they don't have the same problem? Why is Woodstock able to say it's a safety issue? There isn't an intersection in Vermont I, I'll, I'll say this, I don't think there's an intersection in Vermont that a travel trailer, a tractor trailer, a truck carrying a trailer are going to cross the line as you, as you turn at an intersection. If we take up just, for, for example, Virgins, the thousands of trucks that go through there a day, do you think they're all staying on the line? No, they can't. So every, every town in Vermont, if you, if you ask this league of cities and towns, why don't they have the same ability? One, it's costing the DMV a lot of money for these permits. Two, this is interesting. Why is it safe for a tractor trailer to go through Woodstock with a permit and without a permit, they get a ticket? I mean, come on here. They're, 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 it's a big revenue for the town. They won't even give us the figure on the revenue for the town. I looked at that intersection many, many times. It is not any different than any other intersection we have throughout Vermont with a tractor trailer, a 53 foot trailer. There's no way possible. You look at your own town, your community, when they come to an intersection, they've got to pass over the other lane to get across that intersection because that's the way it is. You can't, if you come to a four, like a, a five corners in Essex Junction, same way. There's no way possible you can go through there. So Woodstock has been able to get away with the fact that they have a problem. They just don't want trucks going through their community. And so they're putting it off on some other community or some other town. And it, it's just bothersome to think that they're, they're using this safety. And here's the other thing we said, we're paving this summer. We will make every possible condition when we pave on our right of way to make safety improvements. And we continue to do that because it's a good time. Once you're paving, you can do some shoulders more. But I've looked at that intersection. I can't tell you how many times it's not any more, less safe than any other intersection we have in Vermont. So to give them an exemption, it, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. And, and I know what they're doing it for. They're able to pawn it off on someone else. They're raising money for the community and motor vehicles costing them money. So my question would be, what if 250 towns want the same thing? Why do we deny them? I wouldn't want to deny them either, sir. I know that that- so Are we gonna ban trucks in Vermont? <laughs> no, no. And, and you mentioned Virgins. We There's not a need to have to make that hard of a turn. So I think you're, you're, you are correct that every community has some unique configurations on their roads that make it particularly challenging. 
uh, for for certain maneuver maneuvers. At one point in Virginia, they used to have to turn right down a lane. They don't need to turn anymore. What we particularly have here is maybe we've got one spot that has too much of a grade for a truck that actually is against things, but we're not stopping them. And I would say that the permit has not stopped any trucks from going through. They're, they go through there quite in its but you got to know there's a permit required. If you're traveling from Texas or California or Wyoming, you have to know that they're the only town in Vermont that's requiring you have to get a permit. And then you're fined $600 or whatever it is. I, I don't disagree. I did find out that it wasn't just at one point in, in, in my early days of being in the building, thought, you know, heard of this as well, that it was just Woodstock. Well, you know, getting a little more information that it's actually all many towns along that route before you get to Woodstock. So, so that are probably not as in favor of it. But I, I don't know the answer to this question is I don't think the truck traffic has been diminished all that much or even just de minimisly by the permit piece. But I am worried about the not an intersection. It's more of the curve. There are a couple places where there's less of a departure from the center lane, but there are particularly ones. But I will say that the opportunity this summer with the construction is a terrific opportunity that, that you have brought up and brought back in with this that would allow for improvements. Sure, because we don't want to take land by eminent domain. We're trying to do it within our right of way, and we're going to do all we can within our right of way. So, I mean, I just can't. If you visit any town in Vermont, you have intersections and intersections, and we have uh, a lot of tractor trailers that come to Vermont for our freight. I mean, someone said the other day, why don't you put it on rail? Well, rail only gets it to get you to a certain spot, then you got to put it on trucks. And it just, it's always bothered me to think that Woodstock is able to, and when you say they get the permit, but there's all thousands of dollars of the fines also, if that poor truck doesn't have a permit, they get fined. But the town and, and the town, the permitting is very, very, I mean, the fines are very expensive. So to single out Woodstock and, and I represent the whole state and, and, and I, you know, I, I bring up this question quite often, whether it's St. Albans, whether it's anywhere, you got some sharp terms coming off the interstate or uh, for tractor trailers. But and why are we singling out Woodstock? And I've heard that, well, you know, they're big taxpayers. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. That, that's zero. That, that doesn't impress me at all. Uh, they just don't want trucks through their town. And that's nice to say, but you're adding mileage to that truck going around Woodstock. And then they get to Rutland. And how many intersections in Rutland? I went there one day and I watched them. Every intersection in Rutland, the tractor trailers are going downtown. They come to a four corner intersection. So they have to swing on the left lane. I mean, it happens every day of the week. Uh, we all stop for trucks when they turn, but it's it just bothersome that I'm trying to represent the whole state, but yet I give a favoritism to Woodstock. And uh, like I said, it, it would never pass today under today's conditions because everybody would claim it's a safety issue. And, uh, and, and you know, it could be, but on the other hand, we either ban trucks completely or we give everybody the same opportunity. So I don't know how we're going to do that. that that's, I guess I've said enough. <laughs> I think sir, we will do the, the best we can with what we know at times. Of, uh, communities uh, are not shy about letting us know. Uh, uh, a problem. Oh, sure. I got, I got, uh, in fact, uh, Senator uh, 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 Alice, uh, uh, she, uh, Allison Clarkson, you know, I discussed it with her at great length, and then she was all right. She voted for the bill uh, because she understood that even though they want to do it, it's yeah. not fair to everybody else in Vermont that does have truck traffic. And uh, why do we give them a break? And, and I know they're going to they're going to plead with you that it's a dangerous intersection. And uh, but I think with a new paving job and giving them another year, almost till January, they can get this thing you know, quite safe. Is it going to be 100% safe? No, but there's not an intersection in Vermont that's 100% safe um, for tractor trailers. Now, I, I might add, it's not only tractor trailers, it's campers, it's it's any of those big rigs have to make a large turn to get through an intersection, but that's the nature of it. Most of us stop at an intersection, we, we wait for the truck to come through, and then we, we let them go first, but I mean, that doesn't always happen either. Okay, 
Let's move on. Thank you. We'll 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 move on, and this will be okay. that. We'll put a we'll put a pin. Okay. In that. Sure, that's but fine. I also just want to say that it's not just economic development coming in. There's goods of Vermont that also need to go out. So we're sensitive to all of those things, and our goal is to have the community safe and our road configuration, the community, but also for the drivers. The, you know, the, the drivers that drive these big rigs, it's it's a, it's a little scary for them too when they can't maneuver particular places in Vermont. And, and they, they don't want to put pedestrians and people in jeopardy or in other oncoming cars. Either. Madam Chair, why are we giving them that privilege in one, one town out of 251? Why? Well, they're, the trucks are going through there. The trucks are going through. And I think we'll put a pin in it and I think we can come to at least like we know we have to do something. Okay, thank you. All no, right, let's move that. on. All right. All right. Okay, so your next section is in uh, the Senate's version, section seven, the federal infrastructure language. And this is giving the agency some flexibility if there is um, federal legislation that provides them with additional money and the ability to use up to $2 million sort of as a loan from the transportation fund. And then this approval process that goes through the Joint Transportation Oversight Committee or JTOC. Um, so that is new language from the Senate. I think both committees have heard um, about what that language does and have heard from the agency and uh, Chris and myself, um, but it is language that the Senate added that the House didn't have. Okay. So it seemed like a very good idea. And it was one that I, you know, I wish we, you know, the benefit of time and what might be coming in an infrastructure bill and other things. I think it's very important that we have language. And I agree with you that we need to have language that between now and January, if something should happen or change, that there's a mechanism in place for the legislature's voice to be a part of how that goes. I know that there are people that have approached me around Oh, we had last year, we had language about what projects it should go to. And I, I think right now, our, we, we just want to make sure that uh, JTALK and others are, are able to weigh in on this voice. Or it, at some point, it's a lot of what ifs uh, between now and then. And um, I think there's a good opportunity. I'd also like to just put on the table that possibly for thinking is to have those projects be for re to build um, more resilience in um, in Vermont's infrastructure uh, that that some of those projects would be more of a priority of, of where we go first I think we had some of that language last year or at least as you did last year in in your original t-bill or that you passed last year so some of that language but I think all in all this is a great great idea we just maybe want to um, put some priorities around what they would be building for projects. I like to, on one hand, not tie the agency's hands too much so they have flexibility, but on the other hand, give them guidance around what our priorities are when we leave the building. Does that make sense? Okay. All okay. Right. Move on. Next. Okay. Your next section is going to be section um, four in the House's version of the T-bill. This was the $3 million that was gonna go to town highway aid. The Senate version has deleted this and instead, and we'll see this a little further down, has the $3 million going to the town highway um, class two roadway program and structures program. Um, and in an amount in a split as determined by the agency of transportation. Um, so that, is the change that you have there. It still is $3 million. It still is coming from the transportation fund. It's still being freed up through the swap through the maintenance budget. It's just going to municipalities in a different way. Yeah, we had, you know, we just thought they'd give them a choice. Some towns need a lot of infrastructure improvements and, uh, but I'm anxious to see your, your, your uh, questions. Oh, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Um, we all wanna help the towns naturally. We do. Yeah. We want to help the towns. And this is where, you know, the house had come down and, 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 and had some exposure. And we were very pleased to see the generous offer of, you know, the, the administration's initial budget had doubling of the structures program and the class two paving, you know, and, and some of that was in because last year's was paused and, and not just in this, but it's a, it's a one-time doubling. There's a lot, there's a lot of good investment in those two. And it is a, those are two great programs. Yep. And, and we agreed with, with that, 
large, generous investment. We actually went a little step further in taking a look at, you know, how could we help the towns with that money, which is why you'll see in those sections that we looked at the, the, uh, the statutory requirement to provide for the towns through those programs. We looked at putting a very small bump in bonus in that while we increased the cap as you, when we were, you know, talking earlier at one point about the cost of cost of construction on every anything and everything has gone up and um, the, the towns, the towns are, it's costing them a lot more to do the same projects that they did 10 years ago. And yet we haven't increased the, the cap on those uh, grants is at 175,000. So if you've got a $500,000 project, the most you're gonna be able to get for this is 175. And we did take some uh, testimony, investigate it with the League of Cities and Towns on, well, how to best support the towns because sometimes, you know, we have great ideas, but they may not be getting the job done. So we, we sought their, their guidance on where it would be uh, the best investment for them. And that was increasing the cap. And we did it a bit to two, 200,000. But, but where we came on the town highway aid and why you see the extra there and not continue to have more on the structures in class two was because not every town benefits from the structures or the, the class two uh, paving and that we know that every town does benefit from the, the town highway aid and giving that modest bump uh, was uh, our way of being able to support every town, not just the ones that were in the particular cycle for a uh, class two and, and structures grants, which we had a list of all the towns that have been participating them in the cycle of it. And I think, sir, in, in the next session or in time to come, re really re-looking at those programs and when towns get, get access to through their district offices to those grants is something we should really explore because I think some towns are way, their cycles are way too long. They're like seven, eight years, some of them five years. They're, they're, they're pretty, pretty long cycles before they get any help. And the only help they can get is, is at about 175,000. So that whole program could actually do a little revamping. And, and as we go into maybe the new FAST Act might have some help for us well, in that, that area. Well, but we got, Yeah, we got to also remember that they've got a lot of money for the federal government under the, uh, the, 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 the money. I mean, you look at the list of towns, how much money, there's a lot of money going into towns that they never had before. And so uh, you got to take that in consideration. The other issue I might bring up is the $3 million. Uh, I felt that, uh, number one, once you get that base, it's going to be tough to take it back. Yeah, that $3 million bucks is going to be as a, as a new base. Because you'll see next year, instead of $27 million, that will be $30 million to start off with. Uh, and that's, that's fine. I mean, I don't have any problem. And, and the third item, I guess, uh, we were concerned about is the fact that that money can be used for anything. They can buy a new pickup truck with it or whatever. It doesn't have to be for infrastructure. And the whole emphasis we're trying to promote, as, as you say, it's good to bait, raise that base. We want them to put infrastructure in. And I also agree with you that not every town can, can obtain, uh, uh, does an infrastructure improvement. So there's going to be a balance. But I was, I was amazed when I read the list of the communities who are receiving a million dollars, a million and a half dollars, a half a million dollars from this federal money. Even my little communities in the islands, I got some small ones that are receiving like a hundred thousand dollars or more. So it's 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 real money, you know. Uh, but there's a good argument on both sides. I, I'm not going to disagree with you. I I think they have the potential, as you're saying, potential for some real money coming, as we may have, or in, in infrastructure bill and or fast act as well but a it's not here yet and b um that's for covid covid and as we're finding out with the new guidance from the treasury too of even the things that we think we we could do as early as january maybe differing what we might be able to do come may and whether or not the towns get that it is going to come with some significant strings around covid related and not well, they, can, they can play games with that pretty easily. They, they, they replace one like we do with the agency. You put one here, you take one out there. But I, I, just, I just, I, you know, I, I understand. I hear you what you're saying, but I don't feel really bad because I, 
there's going to be a lot of money for communities, which is, is, is good to it. But that three million is going to be a base in the future. So I hear you. I guess on point that. of clarification, and I, and that, did, that's not a base. It's a one time, just like we did yeah, last but, year. You're going to take it back year. next year, though, Tim. Last year we did seven million, and it's not seven million yeah. this year. I mean, no, it was that was that time. wasn't that wasn't in the base. We're setting we're setting a town highway grant from twenty seven million to thirty. No, this is not. Anthea, can you clarify this? Is this a one time expenditure? Um, so the way that it's um, written is it's saying that it's um, one time, and I'll put the language back up, and there would need to be corresponding language in um, the big bill, as well as there was as it came out of the house. And in subsection B, all the way over to the left column on the top of page 19, the additional $3 million in one-time transportation fund money shall not be included in any subsequent calculations for the annual appropriation for aid to town highways pursuant to 19 BSA section 306A. And that's your escalation formula based on the prior two um, fiscal years. Yeah. So it's based on mileage too. It's not, I know towns, I, I, some of my, my smaller population towns have, get a, a, a larger share. Virgins is one mile square. So when we don't have as many roads. So the town highway aid in right. some communities is, is not, is based on the, the mile, right. mileage, yeah. which is why it's, it's a, at that number so that they can support that, that infrastructure for them to do it. And I would agree with Representative Corcoran, it was 7 million last year. You could almost see this as just being a step down and that next year, we don't know where we're gonna be, but I have a feeling we're gonna be um, in a pretty good place, but maybe not as that, able to get to 3 million one time as well. That 7 million was added to the town highway grant program. No. It was, it was added to eight. That's right. So I just want to make that known. The town highway grant program, which was 23 million for many years, it went to 25. Now it's 27. Next year it'll be it'll be you you the base. It's going to be hard to take that three million back. All I'm saying. So I I don't disagree with you on that, sir. It's always harder to go backwards than it is to go forward and to remind people. One that time money one is time. different than putting it in the base. One time money is a lot different. <clears throat> so I would say the base, money. Yeah, the base amount for the structures program was is I think it is at 15 was is doubled at 15. It was like typically 7 million and went up to 15. And the and the um, the other the other grants or structures in class two were pretty much doubled when what their normal is. They're by statute at about 6.3 and the others at 7 million. And the highway aid is in statute at 27. Right. So all three of them have a statutory minimum. And when we can, if we've got some one-time dollars, we add to the pot. So we've added a significant amount from 6 million to 13 million in, in, in the grant program and from seven to 15 million in the grant program. And so, the house position, which we strong, strongly pursue, is the 27 could have a little bit of one-time money that goes to every town. I understand that 100%, but I'm just saying you're building the base. In the base next year, you're going to have to tell the towns you're going back to 27 unless we want to keep it at 30, right? Yep. Okay. But it's a one-time, it's one-time this one, it was one-time. Yeah, as long as that's understood, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Sure, I just yeah. that's, that's yeah. a tough one. And and then that's why the also the grant programs, it has to be understood that we're not going from six million to thirteen million all the time. We're going from six, probably next year we'll be at back back to six. So it's a one-time doubling of both of those programs as well. Okay. It's, you uh we're gonna well we can like we can, take, we can talk about it. Okay. Yeah, we, we can continue. You can skip all the way down to section 10 because all those ones from 4H to 7H are all interrelated. Okay. That's so you, do, you, do we want to do we want to meet Monday again? Is that what we Oh want? God, I would love to, but that's up to you, sir. Um well, no, no, I I I I feel kind of awkward because like I said, uh, somehow we screwed up on um, our third member, and I think that's important. So I would like to, uh, you know, if we could, anybody, is anybody could meet on Monday? Is that is that a possibility that we could do that? What time would be convenient for folks on Monday? Um, I'm I'm open at, and let me just check. I should always, I, would, I open I would, my mouth, I should look at the calendar. Easier for me in the afternoon. But anyway, it's, uh, 
because I got some things in the morning. I already got some stuff scheduled. I got some meetings in the morning. Uh, I could meet anytime after personally uh, 11 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock. I don't know if that would be something or they want to go in the afternoon. What's, what would... Well, you know, if we go, sir, if I might add, if we go at 10.30, yeah. depending on where we are, I mean, literally, we could get to the point where we could come back later in the day. He would okay, like, let's, let's, and then, let's and then we could finish that, why, and then, or we could be done. Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we end it now? And uh, it's Friday afternoon, and people want to break probably, uh, and get back on ten ten thirty uh, Monday morning. Is that possible? Okay. Work How about your, your side? Okay. Let's. Uh, uh, Laurie, are you there? Can you can you set it set us up for ten thirty Monday morning? I am here and I can do that, yes. And make sure that uh, uh, Senator Perchlick is aware of it and uh, any information that he needs. Uh, anybody else have any issue with 1030 Monday? No. For me. Okay. All right, well, let's try okay. to do that. Good. And that way we can, uh, we, can get, we can get a lot of progress made Monday when we're all, we're all on deck here. So we won't yeah. have to go back and revisit it. Right, right. The other with the senator missing, it, it yeah, is unfair yeah. to go Again, too far. I, I apologize for that. Uh, no, I, I didn't do right. I think we're coming into some roads that we're a lot more okay. on. So yeah. we'll be able to get a lot okay. done on Monday. All right. Well, thank you very much today. And we'll see you all Monday at 1030.